Our agenda is the situation and the course of the fighting at the front. As you know, the clashes in Avdivka have been going on very intensely for more than a month. The number of deaths on the front line, the number of destroyed equipment and images shows us the point of the war. The Russian army spent a large part of its energy by organizing very intense attacks in Avdivka. However, it continues its attacks. We do not think that Putin is interested in the energy depletion of the Russian army and the many losses they have suffered on the front line. The Russian offensive in the direction of Avdivka continues at different points. Ukrainian forces continue to occupy Avdivka and prevent them Russians from seizing Donetsk. However, the situation in Avdivka is very similar to the situation in Bakhmut. Before the Wagner forces disintegrated and lost their strength, the Russian army was on the same side with them in Bakhmut. As they did in the Avdivka area, they devoted a very large part of their energies and forces to Bakhmut. They exerted enormous pressure there for months. They carried out massive offensive operations. But the situation was just like in Avdivka. It was losing a lot of troops and equipment, but it could not achieve its goal. Russia lost a lot of troops and equipment in the Avdivka region in a short time. And at this point, it does not have enough forces to encircle Avdivka. And it is far from completely occupying the region. The Russian army, which has been under Ukrainian firepower in and around Stepova in recent weeks, has lost a lot of military units and heavy armored vehicles there. The Russian army, which thought that it would unlock the region with its operations in the north and east of Stepove, failed to do so and suffered great losses in the region. And if the Russian army continues its operations in Avdivka at this speed, it will run out of power very soon. War analysts say that Russia's strategies are completely wrong and are not sustainable tactics. According to Ukrainian soldiers fighting in Avdivka, in the last few weeks the intensity of Russian attacks in the north and south has decreased by about 30%, while the number of attacks in the central part of the region has increased. The Russians organized strong offensive operations to advance north of Krasnohorivka and south of Tarakon, but failed to achieve the desired results. The Ukrainian army managed to break the Russian pressure by massing troops and equipment in the areas where the Russians were concentrated. The Russians realized that this did not work and started to expand the front line. It forced Ukraine to defend not in a narrower area, but in a wider area. The Russians launched attacks from Vodiane to Krasnohorivka and managed to break through the Ukrainian defense blocks. The line of defense of the Ukrainian forces in the area was wider, with units defending the flanks and units located more in the center. The Russians thought that it would take longer for the Ukrainians to transport and reinforce between the blocks. The Russian army launched its offensive in the Tsarka Okota. He realized that the restaurant and its surrounding. This is in the northeast of Opitna district. The Russians deployed artillery in the area and prepared their positions for the attack. Ukrainian trenches were on the other side of the road. We have already mentioned that the Ukrainian army has set up special defense positions in all parts of Avdivka and that Avdivka is a very dangerous place for the Russians. Although the Russians sent reinforcements to the region and deployed their artillery for operations in the region, they failed to approach the Ukrainian positions. Because around the area where the Ukrainian army formed trenches, there were walls formed by machine gun nests. The Ukrainian army repelled a Russian attack here. However, the Russian army increased the intensity of the offensive. They deployed aviation and heavy artillery. The Ukrainian forces shifted their positions backwards in response to the intensive Russian offensive, but many Russian soldiers who tried to advance in the area were killed by intense Ukrainian fire. Alexander Shtupun, spokesman for the Unified Press Center of the Defense Forces in the Tauria direction reported that the losses of the Russian occupants increased dramatically. The Russian occupants launched the third wave of active actions as part of their offensive in the Avdivka sector. Accordingly, their losses have increased rapidly. The invaders have engaged a significant number of armored vehicles, said Stupin. According to him, Ukrainian soldiers completely destroyed three tanks and seven other armored vehicles over the past day. And that's only in the Avdivka sector. The spokesperson also provided details on 80% of destroyed enemy equipment in the Avdivka area, which was reported yesterday. It was one specific attack, it consisted of two convoys, approximately up to 15 units of equipment, and 80% of it was destroyed, explained Stupin. 
Stupin also noted that the number of Russian deserters and personnel refusing to organize offensive operations has increased, leading Russian commanders to use physical force and barrier troops to push Russian forces into battle. After the Russian troops were destroyed along with the attacks they carried out, the Russian army decided to bomb Ukrainian defenses in the area. Kamikaze drones and new Russian troops were sent to the area. The machine gun nest created by Ukraine was destroying the Russians. The Russians tried to target the Ukrainian machine guns with ATGMs, but as soon as the Russian troops approached the machine guns, they were destroyed. The Russian tactic was completely in vain. Ukraine's strong defense strategy in the region shocked the Russians. Avdivka region continues to be a grave for the Russians. Although the Russians managed to enter the Ukrainian position, they could not find a Ukrainian soldier in the area. The only thing they found were machine guns. These machine guns were remotely controlled. The Russian army was defeated by the greatest strategy implemented by Ukraine. The Russian army wanted to disperse the Ukrainian troops by expanding the line of attack. The Russian army, which wanted to reduce the Ukrainian concentration and weaken Ukraine's defenses by launching more attacks, did not succeed. The Ukrainian army destroyed Russian troops and equipment, completely de-energized the Russian forces in the region, and did it without any troops in the region, which is really crazy. The defensive strategy of the Ukrainian army completely neutralized the Russian tactics. The Ukrainian army managed to destroy a large number of Russian troops and equipment without losing a soldier. According to the commander-in-chief of the armed forces of Ukraine, Valery Zaluzny, during the month when the occupiers intensified their activities near Avdivka, Russia lost about 10,000 soldiers in this area and President Volodymyr Zelensky calls the Russian losses near Avdivka more extensive than those near Bakhmut. However, the war is taking a dramatic turn for Russia as the Russian army continues to lose large numbers of its soldiers and equipment in the fighting. Although the fighting is not as fast and intense as in the early days of the war, there are still many clashes. Putin seems to be helpless in the face of the losses of the Russian army. The reaction of the Russian people to Putin continues to grow day by day. Russia's daily casualties in the war against Ukraine totaled 1,130 invaders over the past day, with the total number of casualties of the Russian army since the beginning of the occupation totaling 321,800 soldiers. The general staff of the armed forces of Ukraine reported that the Russians destroyed 20 tanks, 36 armored vehicles and 33 artillery systems in the past day. What do you think about the course of the Russian military operations in and around Avdivka and the Russian losses? Do you think the Ukrainian army will be able to completely repel Russia from Avdivka and its surroundings with its defense strategies?